coolest part about teaching this class is that um, I don't have the answers a lot of times. I mean, I have a lot more experience dealing with problems and um, figuring out a framework to help them find answers, but like, it's very much um, a case-by-case -case situation where every kid comes with different problems and we have to figure out together like how to fix it. So I learn a lot like through every job that I do, you know, like I've done a lot of jobs professionally with these technologies and uh, that helps, but yeah, like sometimes I get stuck and I don't know, it's super cool when the kids can like figure it out faster than me, you know. På den här kursen så lär vi oss om eh, designspektrat och hur vi eh, hur det går till att designa och eh, framställa en produkt eller produkter överhuvudtaget. Jag heter Simon. Jag går andra året på Vittvälskas IB-linje. What skills do they practice? Problem solving is number one, like iterative thinking, like really trying to um, anticipate problems. You can't visualize things on a computer screen the same way that you do when it's actually built. So yeah, prototyping is essential. Um, they come into the class with just like whatever skills they bring with them from Hög, Mellon, Stadia, whatever school they come from. But like, I don't know, I'm, pretty old but like I just kind of expected that kids in the future would just like automatically know software but in fact it's probably gotten worse over the years like the mentality for like getting kids prepared to deal with finding information is decreasing I think and uh, this class prepares them for that um, because yeah like I said like you're constantly f problem solving and uh, I guess the hands-on skills are almost secondary to the kind of like thinking that you have to embrace if you're going to actually succeed in the class. I mean, some of my kids like aren't capable of doing that, you know, it's too foreign for them to like figure out what is the quest the question that I'm actually asking and like where do I s help myself solve that. But if I don't know, if like half my students walk away with that and it's you've seen like I don't know, like a lot of the ones that maybe they're not like academically as strong as they'd want to be like they connect with the kind of approach to problem solving and figuring out a workflow in like a really sincere way that I don't know like it provides like a refuge for kids that like are good at that maybe they're not going to score super awesome in math but like the hands-on is where they can actually like really learn something Ja, alltså min tanke är att man ska kunna göra sin egen portions eh, göra sin egen portioner då, så man har lite bättre koll på hur mycket pasta man får ut. Så då ska den här sitta fast där och så kommer den här delen vara fastighet också man kan skruva runt så här, så man kommer kunna välja hur mycket man vill ha. Så det är tanken med hålen. <laughs> ja, så då har vi ju använt såna här living hinges då, så att man ska kunna böja trätt runt eh, och det har vi tagit fram i SketchUp som ett eh, program lite likt CAD. Typ. Mm. Vi sitter framför datorn en hel del men hela den här lektionen har jag ju mejslat. Mm. Liksom, mejslat och målat för att och det vi gör på datorn är ju att vi ritar. Vi gör i princip konst fast praktisk konst och sedan så skär vi ut eh, och vi gör sådana saker så jag absolut vi sitter vid datorn men det är ju ett produktivt sittande vid datorn snarare än att... Det är ju likadant att säga att att skriva en uppsats inte är praktiskt. För skriver du en uppsats så gör du ju någonting, du skapar någonting. Och det är ju det vi gör här också. I mean, like, I tell my students all the time, like, all the software that they've been using in my classes, like, it's, it's a skill. Like, many of them are actually able to get a job, like, from knowing the things that I've taught them, that I've worked with them with by the time that they finish the program if they dig in you know they're gonna have to like be self-motivated and really push themselves to solve those problems but like that's a skill that you know even if we don't know what jobs are gonna look like in 10 years like I can promise you that that's a, in the top is like being able to be flexible and figure out what am I trying to ask how do I sort through all the information and get it done you know
Vad tänker du dig för framtiden? Eh, oj, jag vet inte. Men eh, kanske Chalmers, någon eh, arkitektutbildning eller något i den stilen. Det är roligt så. Every, every school system around the world, I know that this is only going to be seen probably around Sweden and maybe other anglophile areas. Like, if you talk to anybody that teaches some kind of variation of a design thinking or design tech class, like, everyone will mention how interdisciplinary the subject is. Um, in the theory that I teach and then the things that we practice hands-on, there's elements of psychology, economics, Um, business studies, visual arts, graphic design, industrial design, architecture, um, yeah, it's chemistry, biology, um, it's such an interdisciplinary subject that the IB calls it um, in the same category of class as biology, chemistry, or physics, so students choose, you can take multiple sciences, A lot of my students only choose to take design tech and that gets their science credit fulfilled. Um, but in the same breath, like they did a student survey where it came up over and over again that some of them felt harassed by their peers for not taking a real science, you know? But like in the end, like this, this class requires and demands like a much higher level of involvement than, you know, sorry for my science colleagues, then, you know, you can sit passively in a classroom and memorize mitochondria and molecular bonds in a way that you can't get away with in a design tech class if you're going to actually succeed and apply to university or pursue a career in that field. I vilka framtida yrken så tänker du dig att du kan ha nytta av det du lär dig här? Av de sakerna du har beskrivit att du gör idag? Alltså helt ärligt så tror jag att man kan ha nytta av det i alla yrken. Mest för att man verkligen lär sig det här med att kanske inte kirurg. För då funkar inte det här med att försöka och misslyckas och göra om. För det kan bli väldigt fel om du är kardiolog liksom. Men eh, i de flesta yrken så har du ändå nytta av att lära dig av dina misstag. Och att lära dig att göra någonting, inse att okej okay, det här fungerar inte. Hur gör jag det bästa situationen? För vi kan ju inte 3D printa hur många gånger som helst för vi är 20 personer i en klass. What do you think will happen with this course and in this field? in the future for example say for example in five years time mm. what will it look like then at this school it's going to be awesome we're going to have like a wood shop we're going to have a cnc router we're going to have a laser sinterer um we're going to have another 3d printer a better facility for um storing work and the raw materials that we need for producing any range of products um So I'm just optimistic. I think that like my enthusiasm and the, the like sincerity that the students are able to um, produce work and be positive about what they're doing here um, is contagious. And um, it's certainly not only design tech, like I have students also using these technologies in visual arts and it's making a big impression on the school environment and the overall community um, in Gothenburg that's um, acknowledging that like Students these age are capable of very higher level thinking, 